Hey guys, welcome back. As you could tell from the title of this video, I had to set the long tail build aside because I was waiting for some material to arrive and uh, it actually arrived as I was finishing up shooting this video. So we'll jump back onto the long tail build in the next video. In this video, we are going to do something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. We're gonna make this jig do this. Okay, I've been wanting to make this jig rotate for so long and uh, it's a great time to do this because I haven't started putting any tubes on it yet. So first thing, uh, let me get you guys in here for a closer look and what I've already got. It's pretty basic bracket, um, but I was never really satisfied with how I designed it. So uh, let's get this thing off. Whoop, hold on a second. Let's get the fixtures off first. Okay, now let's get this thing off. You can see it's secured by four screws and that was part of the issue I had with its design. Uh, adjusting it in any way meant loosening all the screws and then I had to like hold its weight so it wouldn't drop to the floor. It was kind of a scary thing every time I had to uh, adjust this. Here's the rough sketch I made for the new rotating design. Fear not, you can't make sense of this. Uh, only I understand my own crazy drawings so I whipped up a model just for you guys so you don't need to try to decipher my drawing for this build all the materials I'm using are remnants I designed the bracket with this in mind specifically uh, so with that this thing is not going to be pretty and it's a bit over complicated because I didn't really have the right parts laying around so we make do with uh, with what we've got and uh, here's what we've got I'll modify the existing bracket by turning it sideways and uh, then uh, the pipe will sit on the side with the flat part of the bracket at its end. That's where the jig is secured. Th uh, this will let the jig slide up and down and also rotate on the pipe. When I built my first stand, I didn't realize that a lot of folks simply use one of those engine stands. And uh, some of you guys commented on this. Had I known, I would have done that too, but I'm still, uh, I'm still pretty happy with the stand I made because it has a small footprint and doesn't take up too much space. Okay, I'm getting these parts cut and prepped. I need to open up this square tube. This is the part that will clamp the round tube that uh, rotates. And uh, ideally, I would have used a larger diameter round tube, but I didn't have one. Okay, the pieces to this puzzle are ready. First, I'll weld the left side of the vertical face. I'm trying to get as much penetration as possible, but I can't exceed 120 amps because the welding cable on this torch is rated, I think it's rated at a max of 120 amps. And uh, come to think of it, I think my WP9 torch is also rated at that too, so. Yeah, I don't want to go any higher, I don't want to fry anything. Ok, 
Okay, not the uh, prettiest weld, but it. Uh, I think I got enough penetration on that. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna do the, um, I guess this is like the vertical clamp that goes around the post. It's such a hodgepodge of pieces. I was just checking to see if it uh, still fits on the post. Okay, this is the uh, sleeve that uh, wraps around the uh, the tube, the the rotating uh, tube. Here it is. Damn, that thing's ugly. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get the uh, weld the round pipe on here now. Whoa, <laughs> I really should have uh, cleaned this pipe. It is smoking like a chimney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <those. laughs> could, uh, could slow cook some ribs in this thing. A tiny rib. <laughs> like a like a French poodle's rib. I uh, I screamed like a <laughs> sounded like a mouse because the video sped up. The uh, pipe was really hot, and I turned it, and then I I yelled. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I managed to uh, finish this thing and and not die from the fumes. Whenever I uh, do stuff like this, it reminds me of when I was a kid. I used to play in the basement and there was this white, uh, there were these white insulated pipes on the ceiling and I would like swing on these pipes like a monkey and um, the white stuff, the white insulation, it would all like crackle off and it would like get in my hair and it'd get in my face and I'm pretty sure I ended up eating some too, like, you know, it'd just get in my mouth because I was probably yelling or something. And uh, many years later, when I got older, I found out that that stuff was actually asbestos. And uh, why I'm still alive, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that took some years off of my life. I remember uh, back when my dad found out it was asbestos, 
he went down into the basement and he removed it with absolutely zero protection on. He had no mask, uh, nothing. And uh, I'm pretty sure he was just like in a t-shirt. And uh, he just took it all and put it in black plastic bags and then threw it in the trash. Yeah, those were different times. Nobody, nobody recycled back then. And uh, you just threw your crap out on the sidewalk and the, the, the trash company would just take it away. They didn't care what it was. So, anyway, crazy. Okay, getting this thing drilled up. And uh, this is the cap that'll go on the end of the pipe. And it'll kind of like, it'll just hold the thing from sliding out. Uh, I'm drilling holes because I'll just uh, throw some tack welds in there to just kind of tack it on. All right, so this uh, clamp is almost ready. Uh, I just need to tack on the nuts, and I forgot to turn the camera on, so here it is all tacked up. Okay, so before I get this clamp on, I need to make an adjustment to the stand. So the crossbeam is positioned at an offset from center, but I didn't offset it enough, and the jig is still front heavy. So I'll offset it even more because the new clamp positions the jig even further forward. So to do that, this cross beam will move back to here. All right, just about ready. Let's get the wheels back on this thing. I didn't show it in the video, but I had to do a lot of like balancing because I don't have an even floor and my welding table's not even either. So I had to kind of like bend it around bef uh, before I actually welded that stand together again. All right, here we are. We're putting the, uh, the clamp back or we're putting the clamp on and yeah, we're, we're really close to finishing this thing up. So as you can see, this uh, this thing can slide back and forth to offset the weight depending on how the frame is positioned on the jig. And uh, it will slide up and down and it can rotate. I'm so happy I did this. All right, getting the stuff back on there. It's not too heavy, but once you get all the fixtures on there, this thing is pretty heavy. I haven't weighed it, but I don't know. I think it's like a good, uh, I don't know, I guess at like a 50 pounds, maybe more. Okay guys, that wraps up this video. In the next video, we'll get back to the long tail build. The material I was waiting for is aluminum round and we'll take that and make a new dummy axle sized at 14 millimeters. Do uh, tune in for that. And if you want more information on the long tail build, you can find that on my website, pithybikes.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later.